Hi. As um, societies in the West dismantle themselves and collapse into unholy messes, the constitutional figureheads are coming apart at the seams. In the UK, we have a mayor who wants us to learn Arabic and a king who apparently wants to represent all faiths and is trying to reconcile a lunatic globalist agenda with his role as a constitu constitutional monarch in a sovereign nation. And add to this a parliament where there is arguably a single political class of career politicians who no longer realise that they are actually employees, servants of the people, but now see themselves as little oligarchs, determined to preserve their miserable little bits of power, garner as much money as they can for themselves, and the rest of us can go to hell once they've stolen our stuff. What is a king? Well, the constitutional figurehead of an independent state. Note that word, independent. In the ancient Arabic world, the king was an absolute ruler. He could do what he wanted, and tough if he didn't like it. Unchecked control, the freedom of a god to do as he wished. It could, he could be a complete tyrant. It allowed for personal caprice and the indulgence of personal, the indulgence of personal wishes. That changed. In ancient Israel, it was actually a moral decline that demanded the need for a different type of king. Eli the priest had been charged with the task of combining civil and religious authority, and it, he failed, largely because his sons were morally degenerate and abused their power. And so the people were unhappy, and they had a desire for a king. And the king to represent national unity and strength, to represent a true patriotism and to maintain a standing army to protect the nation. Notice all these key words again, patriotism, nation. This is the beginnings of a constitutional monarchy as we understand it today, or thought we did. In the UK, a king is the head of the state and the protector of the church, not all churches, but the Protestant church. He is also to protect the rights and well-being of all citizens, which he symbolises. His power may be largely symbolic, but symbols are what create and strengthen nations. So in our case, he's king of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. And that is all. He is not king of kings. He is not king of the world. And he is, should not be a pawn in a global elite who wish to do the very thing that he is constitutionally bound to oppose. Global elites wish to dissolve nations in the, in the West, to er erase national sovereignties and boundaries and borders. How our king can subscribe to a globalist agenda while still maintaining he is defender of the nation is, at best, deeply confused and at worst, hypocrisy. Similarly with the church, he is not defender of all faiths, but of the Protestant church. He may respect Buddhism, Quakers, Catholicism, Islam, but that's irrelevant. It is not in his carefully laid out job description. And it's also deeply worrying that a constitutional monarch who lives in a culture where there has always been a clearly defined separation between church and state should seek, if that is what he intends, to take on the role of defender of Islam in the UK. Islam, where there is no separation of church and state, and where blind obedience to Allah, as prescribed by some mullahs whose thinking is from the Middle Ages, is abhorrent. Women are second class citizens, citizens, gays are an abomination, and declaring fatwas on people seems to be a good way to proceed. And similarly with history, to even suggest the idea of a, res of a research project funded by taxpayers to discover what role the royals had in slavery is in itself ludicrous but not in his job description. His job is to symbolise all that we should be proud of as a nation and our extraordinary history, and to take responsibility for our actions. But taking responsibility does not mean spending millions, creating a false picture of the past in order to please a hand-wringing woke minority who are ashamed of being British and wish to destroy any properly, intelligently informed sense of the past. Now the chessboard is always an interesting metaphor for life and society. 
and it's worth our king, indeed any king or queen, reminding themselves that they may be the most important chess piece, which the, the opponent has to checkmate in order to, to, to win. But, and here's the thing, the king can be taken by any opposing piece, including the little pawn. That's us. So beware. The evil republic signals the end, the bloody end of monarchy in France. And similarly, the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, has a lot to answer for. While he trumpets the wonders of Islam and, multi, and, and a multiculturalism, remind yourself of a few facts on the ground. Even Angela Merkel, who, along with others like Tony Blair, did so much to ruin Europe, admits that an imposed multiculturalism is a catastrophe, as is um, imposed unlimited migration. According to a report by the Office for National Statistics, the number of people killed in the, with a knife in England and Wales in 2021-22 was the highest on record for 76 years. And by the end of 22, London was the heart of all knife crimes in England. The Met responded to 13,405 incidents and to 49,991 non-fatal crimes involving knives between October 2021 and June 2022. And of 679 homicides, 38% were the result of assault using knife or sharp instrument. And Westminster has the highest rate of offences by population. So thank you, Sadiq Khan. And... Also, his business support programme, trumpeted as humane and caring, is how power politics work. You impoverish people, you enter a lockdown that ruins the economy, you force people to stay at home, you take and, and to take big farmers' endless vaccinations, to wear masks and to see others as a disease threat, and then when they are truly weakened and completely debilitated, you give them handouts and say, look how I care about you. Look how I'm helping. Thomas Sowell, the American genius thinker and economist, often points out that this is a political strategy, intentional, intentional or not, to weaken people and take away their autonomy and self-responsibility. So on every front, we are slowly being controlled, manipulated, deceived and impoverished. And it would be nice if we went down with a war cry and not a whimper. If you like this, please do share and subscribe. Books are detailed below.